Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, since the car is up on jack stand still, trying to complete the uh, install of that PTC converter, I um, thought I'd give you guys a little 411 on my opinion on, on Paxton Superchargers, why I run them and how long I've run them and what my personal experience with them is. So, as you guys know, I run a Paxton Nova 2000. I've had the 2000 in the car for a long time actually, I'd have to say uh, since 1995 uh, or 96. This original supercharger has been on there that long and I put it through many different forms. Um, it's now, you know, driven with a serpentine belt but it used to be cog driven um, on the street and the only reason why I, I went away with that was because when the car was originally a stick car taken into the track um, those in between shifts it wasn't too happy I'd toss that belt and you know those Kevlar cog belts are pretty strong I was lucky I didn't break anything at the time so but here's my history on the Novi 2000s and Paxton's in general so as I said I've been running these for years so when I started first running Paxton's um, Granatelli was still the actual owner of them um, and prior to these Novi's, um, the Paxons were all actually ball driven and had their own, uh, they contained their own, they used their own oil rather than the engine oil that is used on the majority of them today. I mean, you can still find some out there that have still our, our self-contained oil systems, but, um, the original ones back then were as well so they first came out with the SN series um, back in the 80s actually and we're on top of the game I'm talking Paxton has been around a while Grand Tell has been a while in the racing scene but I'm talking more about the when Fox bodies were, were popular so the SN series were the first things to hit the market Vortec wasn't around and um, there were nitrous oxide kits but um, a lot of people back then were still afraid um, including myself and actually let me take it back actually the first power outer on this car was a nitrous kit because it was cheaper um, back then it was a, a NOS system that I ran it's a I think it was a 515-2 stage 2 kit it was a dry kit good to uh, 150 horses so but I ran that for a while then growing up in LA seeing a lot of the guys um, at the local car shows stepping away and, and going towards the Paxson route it was something that I, I, I actually wanted to try so running that running that when I ran that uh, actual NOS kit NOS nitrous oxide kit I had a friend at the same time who did the same similar engine build that I did which was a 347 so the original combination on this was actually a 347 nitrous motor he gave me a ride in his Paxton supercharged 347 and mind you this is when the 347s were just starting to come out companies like Coast High Performance which is what I run on this car I know they changed hands on that company but um, you know they they were starting to come out and people were kind of being secretive back then because you know we're street racing and stuff like that you couldn't tell that you're a stroker a stroker motor still can right cannot so anyways um, he gave me a ride in his Paxton blown car and I was impressed. Let me tell you, the just the torque that I felt on that versus from what I felt on the nitrous, it was hands down the route that I wanted to go. So with that being said, I found a Paxton supercharger which was known as the VR4, Paxton VR4, which was um, their race only blower <clears throat> um, once again it was ball driven but since it was designed to be race only it was difficult to put on the street I mean, you could do it I did it and the only way I pulled it off was I actually ran an a uh, oil cooler to it those things used to run were designed to run actually transmission fluid and Paxton actually had their own um, Lubric lubrication that they would sell it was called Paxitrack. It was thick and gooey and it, it was supposed to help actually 
increased boost because they were ball driven, not gear driven like these are today. So um, with that being said, I ran two, two of those coolers to it. It had an oil pump and everything. It would siphon oil in and out, go through a cooler and I monitored it, the temperature and stuff. But let me tell you, um, if you weren't careful with those because it was a race only blower, you'd be in a lot of trouble if it overheated. It would seize the bearings and back then it was about $500 to repair. So anyways, running that <clears throat> VR4, which was their race only blower, let me tell you, been in, in different types of supercharged vehicles, obviously the Nova 2000 now, I've been in S trim cars, and, um, but those VR4s and the SN series in general were probably, it is in my experience of what I've experienced, the quickest spooling supercharger I've ever been in because the step up ratios on those is 4.44. So when I mean step up ratio, step up ratio basically entails one revolution, it's 4.44 turns of the whole internal impeller. So one crank, one revolution of the pulley itself here, if you were to go one complete revolution on this, the impeller inside would turn 4.44 times, which spools boost fast. I mean, you, you think spool, you think turbos and stuff like this, but believe it or not, these things, because it's low driven and, and it has to, to, you have to return, you know, the engine over, the crank over, whatever, it has to have RPMs involved as well. There is a bit of, of, of spool time. It's not lag like turbos are known, at, known for, but it, it does, you, you can't see the difference. So anyways, those VR4s actually were designed, believe it or not, to compete with when Vortec came out with their superchargers. So the first Vortec supercharger where people are most commonly uh, remember is the A-Trim. So the A-Trim was comparable to the S standard SN series. They had like an SN89 or an 88, you know, because back in the year that's when they obviously had them and stuff, but those things competed with them. So what happened was Vortex started stepping it up and introduced a race model, not the S-Trim, okay? Because the S-Trim was still, still comparable, believe it or not, to still can compete with the S SN, regular SN series, 88 and 89s. They were close. The A-Trim was good, but the SN series still outperformed it. Reason being was, as I said, the 4.44 step up ratio and the actual CFM flow. So a lot of people don't realize this, but when the Vortec company started coming out with the R trim, as I mentioned, that was their race only. The VR4 came about at the same time. So the VR4 was made to flow roughly around 1300 CFM at max boost. So that would be very comparable to the R-Trim. So after that happened, Paxton de de decided to step it up once again and started introducing their first blowers that were um, gear driven. Gear driven like the um, Vortex were. So with that being said, they came out with the Novi 2000. And a lot of people do not know this, but <clears throat> when Paxton first introduced the Novi 2000, there were actually three versions available. People thought Novi 2000, one blower. No, there were actually three in the initial phases <clears throat> that were designed. First was an SS, which was a Super Street, okay? Um, and then was the there was a second one that was the race, and then the third was the RR, which is still it's a basically reverse rotation. Which like people that modulars have modulars, like my brother's ninety eight Cobra, since the blower has to be facing the other way, they designed a re reverse rotation. So that SS version really didn't take off because Paxton started seeing everybody wanted the race version, which is this guy here. And the main difference between the race version and and the uh, Super Street version was the bearings themselves. The bearings on the race versions 
um, could handle the use of cog, cog, cog belts. So where this guy stands, where first action, when it was first actually designed, when Paxton still owned the company, was a super blower. And what I mean by super blower, at the time there was the R trim, which as I said, um, Vortec had, had produced, but this guy's design is actually, it's designed actually to flow up to 1700 CFM. 1700 CFM, so in today's standards, that would be close to the YSI blower. So a lot of people um, don't realize that. They see the Novi 2000s and think, hey man, that's, that's comparable to the Vortec S trim, but in actuality, the original, when I mean original, because I don't know now since you know it's been quite a while, but now Vortec owns Paxton if they've actually changed the design on the impellers because that's where it's all about the, infic the efficiency of how the impellers flow. So the other thing that people don't know about Paxton's is um, that one of the main things that they made them popular was the size of this here their output, um, excuse me, their input. So how much air it could take in, um, it, it was actually larger, it's a four inch. If you compare it to a lot of the older or, or still today's blowers, you can see they're, they're not quite a four inch diameter. They may be like a little bit over three and a half or something like that. But another design that you can't see here, I was gonna show you that Paxton had incorporated was on, maybe you can, let me grab a flashlight here so you will be able to see it. Um, design they had was actually they put in like a bar. Maybe you can see it there. See that bar right there? That was actually help for, they used that for assisting with the flow of the outlet charge. That's one of Paxton's designs as well. And the thing that Paxton's were great about back then was the actual they they were known for being quiet so these Novi 2000s when you hear them they're pretty quiet in fact you can't hear them till they start you know creating creating boost and stuff but when Paxton the big gripe that people had about Paxton's in the beginning was when Paxton first came out they only sold the compressor so you couldn't find a bracket to run it so what I had to do back then was go to a, another company uh, the company back then was known as Central Coast Mustangs. They actually produced a bracket for it. And it wasn't until later when the development started really ramping up was when they de developed the uh, two-plate system. And as actually you could see on mine, it's old school. It's only got one plate holding, holding the blower in. But I actually had this guy manufactured. It's an aluminum piece. I had it water jetted. It's thicker. Um, to help with that flex flex itself, but Paxton was the first one to come out and I'm not sure I'm pretty sure Vortex still hasn't had it But Paxton was the first one to come out with the dual tensioning system on the blowers so This guy's dual tensioning as well the way that the way that um, um, Central Coast Mustang produced it, but you, as you could see I don't know if you'll be able to see down there Tough to see. Maybe I'll snap a pic or something and put it on here. But um, that's what they designed is a dual dual intention system to help sandwich that actual belt to reduce belt slip. So, but anyways, um, that's actually the history of of the Novi 2000. After the Novi 2000, of course, you guys started hearing about the bigger blowers now. So, and now I know that they have, back then they actually had a Novi 3K, which was huge. I never got to see any that in person, but that, that guy was huge. And I believe that was made to go up against, correct me if I'm wrong, I, it might be Vortex Mondo blower. Um, but nowadays, I mean, Vortex got so many different ones now. I know they got, obviously I mentioned the YS trim, which... Um, people have seen, you know, are very popular, um, and they got the S trims and they got the T trims, so they got so many different trims. But 
Paxton, when they came about, they wanted a blower that can perform uh, all around. And in all honesty, when I got this race blower, this was Paxton's race blower, as I mentioned, because of its bearings and it's got a little bit different design in its impeller. Um, I was impressed. You know, I was, I was a little bit worried about boost and stuff like that. How far it would, how fast it would, how fast I would get it. It would spool, but in the end, it, it's 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 there. So if I were to compare the difference, as I said, the VR4 boost was quick, the original race only blower, that one was quick. Because of that CFM flow, 10 pounds, people will think 10 pounds is 10 pounds, it's not. Because as I mentioned before, it has to do with the efficiency of the impeller. 10 pounds on this guy, compared to 10 pounds on the VR4 or 10 pounds to the S-Trim, because of this design, the boost is more potent. It's it's difficult to explain, but it, it it's a lot. It pulls a lot harder than you know ten pounds on the other on the other setup that I had before. But this guy here now is now pulling now for ten pounds, but it's actually pulling to see twenty pounds of boost. So it actually puts it out there. So there you have it, my explanation of Paxton superchargers and why I like them. So I've had this once for a long time. As I said mentioned the nineties. My kid brother who's got a 98 Cobra, same thing, he's, he's had his since, actually he got his in 1998, 99 is when he got his, when he first got his, uh, his Cobra there. So he still has that on his car as well. Um, he hasn't pulled his any, he hasn't pulled his to change uh, boost at all, but it still performs quite well. Um, you know, if, if I could change setups on this and just mess around. I love this blower, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to, as I, you guys know, my goal is, is 990s, I, but I still gotta do a lot of safety stuff. But I love to build a, 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 a turbo, turbo motor for that car there. So I do have a, well, it'd be a small turbo motor. I can't get as far into deep, you know, in my pockets. I won't go <laughs> as deep into my pockets as I did with this one, because this is an R. R block, you know, 349 as I mentioned with heads and everything. But if I could do that setup there, I'd love to do a little small on three turbo setup. I've got a, a motor here, a little block, a little 302 that, that's a stock block. Nothing, nothing fancy, so I can't go too crazy. Um, I'd love to do that. And, you know, it was a build I wanted to do with my son, but my son is into, believe it or not, Mazdas. Mazda Miata, so I don't know where I went wrong, that dang Fast and Furious movie. So that one there actually is an actual nitrous car. So I've been running the NX kit on it for a while, but we have a problem here in Arizona now. We, we're a dry state. We haven't had nitrous oxide available for us for a while, so it kind of, kind of sucks, man. So, but anyways, there you have it. Um... My experience with Paxson Superchargers. So I look at I don't have a banner of them yet. I've been wanting one, but since Vortec took them over, they're no longer available. Can't find anything, man. A little old school stuff. But there you have it. That's my experience with Paxson Superchargers. And uh, that is why I really dig them. Really, really dig them. They're great blowers. Um, as I mentioned, the 2200 has is, is been out, I don't know how long, but I got a friend that actually, uh, that I met at the track, Fox Body guy, he put a Coyote motor in his, uh, ran in the 10s with just the motor itself, uh, which makes me jealous because I'm old school, but he's, you know, he's got the new, new, uh, new stuff in his, but he just put in the 2200 in his, and he's, he's actually shooting for, I believe he said, 890s. I'm shooting for 990s, he's shooting for 890s, and that's, you know, fantastic, you know. So, but there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, have a great day.